Hand claps, please. <clears throat> Don't we have some exciting news uh, about uh, a special event? Can we call it an event? A special on, event? Uh, yeah, on our Patreon that you're hosting. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I guess we could talk about that. I mean... Where's your book? I'm doing... Let Where's me, your book? Let me get my book. This is a... I'm hold it over here. Um, it's a... Well, I'll tell you. It's the artist way. It's a spiritual path to higher creativity. But it's a 12-week process or program for getting in touch sort of with your creator, your inner creative or inner artist. Um, I mean, it's... this for artists but it really is for anybody there are a lot of you know lawyers attorneys people who work in the corporate america people who work in restaurants um that just even if you don't yourself don't necessarily identify as an author a writer or a painter or an actor or a singer or director any of those things it's still sort of like connects to a part of you or unleashes helps you like unleash a part of you that lets you lead with a sort of more creative life um but if you are somebody who is also aspiring to like you've always had a novel that you thought about writing or a screenplay or you've always wanted to be a singer or get into visual arts painting or sculpting it is a way to sort of re-get in touch with that because after so many years of being in this world or like through adulthood we sort of like push that aside and we tend to sort of minimize that part of ourselves. And this is about unleashing uh, all of that that's inside of you. And this is, I think, will be the fourth time in my life I've done it. And uh, I've always done it on my own, but I've always wanted to do it with a group. Always, always, always wanted to do it with a group. And when we started this Patreon, I said this will be the perfect place to be able to do that. And I'll be able to do it with our community. So, that being said, Vanna, if you're finished, um, I will be starting that. Miss White. It starts, we're going to begin this process on March 12th, and it'll be Tuesdays, every Tuesday for 12 weeks, and um, every week we explore sort of a different part of um, your creativity and unblocking you can come to our patreon and learn more you can google it you can do patreon.com slash matt and blue there, there will be a yeah. link in our bio but you can find out more information online you can ask me questions you can ask me on my instagram you can ask in patreon you can ask here if you want to do it though you do need to be part of the boom shakalaka tier that's what i wanted to say so if you sign up and you want to do this boom shakalaka is the tier in order to access and be a part of this really exciting it's going to get kind of messy and beautiful and we're going to explore a lot of really great things and i will stop talking there is a greater issue that we have been struggling with the last couple days and and matt and i have talked a lot about um talking about this on our channel we've talked a lot about sharing it what does it mean um should we do it should we share this we have been asked a lot since the building of our family um if we ever come up against any resistance as far as being in a uh, marriage with somebody of the same sex, raising a family, being, you know, uh, an LGBTQ family. Especially that we've been in like smaller towns for the past eight years. Yeah. Um, yeah. In smaller communities, our son, his biggest passion is baseball. He's really excited about this season and this year uh, because this, it's, it's, I feel like in a nutshell, this is his world. Like this is what he is. lives for. It is what he lives for. Very much so. Uh, we've had a few practices before opening day. I think he, this is maybe the most excited he's been in a long time about one of his teams. So opening day was last weekend. They start handing out uniforms and... Blue holds up the uniform. I read the name of the sponsor and it is a church, which a is church. A, one of the, like a big church in town, one that so many people in this community attend. You know, I feel like anytime religion comes into play, um, I always, it's just such a sensitive topic. There are people that I know who are Christians and who are fun loving, accept you for who you are type of people. And yes and speak out against the the idea that christianity is you know an, a, a religion that would discriminate discriminate or or consider you a sinner because you happen to love somebody of the same sex like 
you know, and, and I have one very particular person in my head who actually said that to me, like, that's not the meaning of Christianity. Um, honestly, for me, that's not, that's not for me to decide because I don't identify with that. So I kind of leave it where it is. Your religion is your religion. But when I saw the name of the church on my son's jersey, which he was then supposed to be, or he is supposed to be wearing and having on his back, I kind of like that definitely took me back and thought, well, I need to know what this church is about. What do they stand for? Yeah, he's about to wear it for like the next three months on his back. So, you know, of course, for us immediately, what comes to mind is like, where do they stand or what's their position on a family like ours? I think you said it best when you said like, this is Crow's, this is Crow's world. Like, are we going, we don't want to, you know, affect his future in the sense of like, we don't want him to be branded as like, oh, he, those are his dads and this is what comes along with him. So you don't want him on your team because this happened in the past, like small towns kind of work like that. Yeah. Because of all of that, we decided we wanted to find out what their position was first before we started causing any sort of like ruckus yes. right so you call you did you did finally hear back from the pastor and the pastor said to you i mean things i don't know do you want me to talk about it? like you want to recount you know, because i don't want to exaggerate it i want you listen to the conversation like i want you to explain how you heard it so basically blue just you know called up he didn't really sort of like reveal what his position was he just asked you know i'm i was i calling to get your position on marriage equality and LGBTQ rights. And the pastor immediately started saying, you know, well, we believe in what the Bible says. Well, first he asked me what my position, like he turned it back on me, which you did. And then you said, well, we're not here to talk about my position. We're here to talk about yours. But um, it was very, he like immediately went to, you know, in the Bible, it says that um, homosexuality is a, is a sin and marriage should be between a man and a woman and blue said asked him you know do you believe you know if you had um some like gay members walk come into your church would you welcome them and he said well we would welcome that he said something to the effect of you know like if we had robbers come into our church we would do the same thing we would never let them play a role in our church or have it be in any position of leadership but we would welcome them as we do welcome anybody. And you say, whoa, 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 hold up. Wait, robbers? Wait, wait. Robbers? Are we using the term robbers but not in, only as in thieves? So essentially he like compares us to robbers, right? <laughs> and this is when Blue reveals, like Blue says, okay, well, hold up. Like, cause this is offensive now because, and you say, well, I just have to let you know now, like we, I am married to a man. We have a son who we've adopted and, you know, we've given him a life and we've like made it made it sort of our life's mission to give him every opportunity and love him and build a loving home for him. And you are comparing. Well, and my my point was, is like our family is every bit as much of a family as a family uh, based or or created by a man and a woman. Any heterosexual family. We're a family. And, and that's what you sort of revealed. And he just immediately kept going back to like, well, the Bible says and sin is sin. And you, um, and then, you know, he's, you started, you asked him sort of about, or then he brought up that he would never um, take part in it. Like if he were asked to um, be a part in a, a, a gay, gay marriage, wedding. like to yeah. not facilitate, what is the word? Why am I blanking on the word? But to like, um, like to marry so two people. Well, officiate? I, officiate a wedding. Yeah. A gay marriage. And he absolutely would not. And then you asked him about if he had, a, if he ever had had a member in his family who did come out that was gay. And I mean. He did hadn't, but you asked if that were to happen, would he attend the wedding or whatever? And he said, absolutely not, because he would not take place in celebrating sin. And so it got like, I feel like it's going to get a little bit. You did great at like backpedaling and realizing that, okay, like this is going in a direction. You said, I want oh, to like, respectfully <laughs> say like, yeah. you know, that this, I'm not going to change your mind. You're not going to change mine, but you know, we do have I got you, what I, what, what I was calling for. Right. And you said, you know, we do have, our son is um, on a baseball team that you guys are sponsored and whatever. And not like, obviously we can, he cannot carry the name of your organization on his back. So blue reaches out to the league to ask for a new uniform, which I feel like given the circumstances, a fair ask. So yes, he sort of like says, absolutely. You don't have to justify. You don't have to explain yourself. We'll get you a replacement. Like we'll get you a new Jersey without the sponsor. And we, I think both at this point are feeling like 
few. Like we, this doesn't have to become a thing because like you were saying before, this is just, it's just crow's world. So we're feeling like relieved that this is going to be taking, like, taken like care of. And we're feeling super relieved that we can now move forward. It's not going to be a thing. Like they were respectful. Everything was handled respectfully. So we waiting to get our Jersey. I'm sitting at practice. Um, the other night I open up my email and we have an invoice sitting in our box for a replacement jersey. So now this is where it becomes a bit tricky, right? Is because sure they were happy to give us a they probably would replace anybody that wanted to, but for the cost. Now keep in mind when you sign up, you pay a, a lot of money. A lot of money to sign your kid up and it's supposed to be included is the jersey, right? Or the uniform. And so that is supposed to be included in your fees. And now it's not that much money, but it is the principle of now we're being charged when, because you put something on our kid, the name of an organization on our kid's back that openly and in our community are vocal about the fact that they believe that we are living in sin and that they strongly they hold us believe in the same regard as somebody who steals and is as a, a robber. thief and like hurts other people, right? Harms other people. So, so this is, I feel like where, like, of course we could just pay it and move on. And this is, I think where we start to things get a little messy because it is like, at what point do we stand up for our, like what we believe is right? But do we stand up for like the sort of the principle, but then also, do it try again like you said like this is a league that crow could end up playing in for the next five yeah like five years and he will be continue to go through drafts and be on teams and you kind of grow the same way you go to school with kids in the community like he and it is a smaller community so like people talk and people know what's going on and you know you meet one person who was on the team with that person and everybody knows each other and uh, like knows everybody and so like so to what extent do we sort of like want to raise this sort of like thing because this is it does this become a distraction from crow for his world and it's one thing when it's us or even if it were his school or something else it, i feel like it would be different but because this is like his world his passion and like now are we sort of disrupting or like distracting from what he loves because like if we take this to a certain extent well and you know that's something that you said to me that crow said to you the other night um and it's something that Crow, he says to me all the time as well. Um, he'll just come up to us and he'll say, oh, daddy, you're the best dad ever. I love you so much. I'm so happy with my life. Like he'll use that kind of language to us and give us a hug. He's very affectionate. He's very like, he speaks his emotion. Um, and a lot of times he does it is because he's buttering you up and he wants some screen time or he wants to play video <laughs> games. But, you know he'll say these things and just love on you. And you think like, I will fight to the death for anything for this kid. But is this thing that we're experiencing this, which seems like a little like, Oh, just pay the money and get a new Jersey and move on. Is this part of something that when he gets older, he's going to hear about this and be like, why didn't you, you know, like, no, dad, you should have told him to like, stick it and you should have done this like are we doing what's going to not only make him proud but what is right and and are we just being complacent by saying okay we'll pay for it and move on like what is the right thing to do like how much is the fight that we're supposed to be fighting and i don't yeah. want to say the word fight but you know what i mean like yes standing the, up the resistance or, standing yeah. up standing firm and like no you can't do that to us yeah especially for somebody like he is very proud of like certain things about himself that he kind of carries you know like and i think a lot of times when he's met with resistance about things he even holds digs his heels even more like for example his favorite color being pink it is something you know he's gotten i don't even know if being pink is really still his favorite color but he digs his heels in and he says it is because of the fact that other people will be like pink is a girl's color mm. and he hears that so don't it makes him like it makes him even stronger, like more adamant about it being his favorite color because he just wants to like make that point. And I feel like he's very much that way about us. And I'm grateful for the fact that he's not a kid that's going to feel, you know, sort of like 
left out you know that like why is my jersey different or oh my gosh now you guys are making a thing out of this and he's not that kid he's not that kid that's gonna feel like he wants to be like the other kids i think he's he's absolutely fine with the fact that he's getting a new jersey as a matter of fact when we told him oh you you're we're gonna have to get you a new jersey he said well can i get a bright like can i get one that's this color he wanted a turquoise yeah one. turquoise one and so he but like, uh, the thing is, like, the, I like, explained to him why. Oh, you absolutely. I did explain to him, like, there's, you know, what was on the jersey and how they view us and our family. And, he, like, it really was not. He was like, fine, can I get a turquoise one? Yeah. That's, that's who might be like his, yeah. So there's not even, like, an ounce of, like, oh, dad, why are you doing this? But, again, at the same time, like, think he is a kid and, like, things that he might not be aware of that I think that I think are valid for us to be concerned about are, again, the, like, how like if we were to like make this thing like and also like we live in california chances are like we could fight this to a point to like we we live in a super liberal state that would probably come to our defense and like we would probably easily oh my gosh but it's just but, <laughs> jersey that's but it's but, over a uniform and and but i mean but, if if you think about it like this is where i keep I, th- I hear you say that and I think, God, it just sounds so dumb. It's just a jersey, right? 100%. But it's not just a jersey. Exactly. It is about the principle of you are not allowed to charge me extra money because you think you're going to brand my son's apparel with your sponsorship when you are directly saying that we are not of the same social status or we're sinners or whatever you want to call it. You're saying we're lesser. Yeah, we're going to hell. We're living in sin. Whatever the verbiage is you want to use. Like you are saying that we are not worthy of leadership. There is no way in a million years that if there was a church that like was anti-Christian, anti-whatever, like, I don't know, that that this league would let allow that organization to sponsor and put an anti-Christian organization on the back of a bunch of boys' uniforms. There's absolutely no way that would ever happen. Maybe it depends on how much money that church has. I, there's no way. But this company is openly anti-something. Yes. It's not even just like we're a different way, like we're a synagogue, we're a different religion or we're something. They're openly homosexuality is a sin sin. so it's they're openly anti our lifestyle and that's where it's gets you know to the point where you're say i just don't feel like we should ever have to be in that position well we should never have to pay to say no i'm not you can't put that on my son okay yeah um and what if you were muslim or some other jewish like some other religion right Mm -hmm. and you saw that there was you know, this Christian church mm-hmm. on your child, are you like, would those parents still be okay with that? What it just seems. Are you saying, if, so that I like, that, so that brings up a whole other thing because yes, I think that that's, but at opening day, they also, this church led a five minute prayer, you know, and there was a lot of Jesus talk and like, and oh, you're like father, father, then. and you're like, even what if you have other religions here, this is a, huge league with there were, hundreds and hundreds of kids there were at least 500 people on that field well there were 450 Min- kids students or kids yeah but and if you looked out there weren't a lot of people bowing their heads but there's a minute like you think they bring out a rabbi to leave the jewish prayer no they were not if they brought out a rabbi you know how many people would be like what is happening here yeah but especially you know, like, currently in this environment but you they but because it's a pastor, we're all supposed to like take our hats off and pay the respect. Which listen, the, we which did. We, we did. Absolutely. We took our hats off. We were respectful. We. But, th- I didn't pray, but, but I, I guarantee, was respectful. Yeah, but I guarantee you, if it were a rabbi or a, some, like, would, a, anyone of any other religion, it would there would have been a lot of um, uncomfortable people in that crowd. I don't know. Or it would have been, it's just like, you, I just can't even imagine that ever happening. I don't even wonder, like, what if it was just Glad, who's not even, Glad is not anti anybody or the human rights campaign. They're not anti anything. But can you imagine a baseball team sponsored by Glad? Glad? Like, what do you think that <laughs> would that What happen? do you think that would be at this? You know, I, like, part of me is like, I'm determined to make that happen <laughs> for the next season. We are in the midst of this. We actually have even had this talk between the two of us. Like, do we want to talk about this because it's not settled? Like, the like, we are not right. We don't. 
We don't have we don't a know solution. Where... We don't know what the outcome is going to be or what, we don't know what the right way is to handle it. And I want to just pay. I want to just be like, I'll pay it. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to ruffle any feathers. But then I think, what about all the people that came before us that did the hard work? What about all the people who got drug out into the streets and beaten and, you know, they paved the road for us. And now we're just supposed to be like, okay, we'll pay the fee. No big right. deal. You can keep doing this. Like, or the families that will come after us. We're not going to change. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's my point. Like, what are, mm. what are we contributing if we don't? We're, we're setting a precedent that if there were another, you know, gay family in the next season or the following years, we've set a precedent that you know, that they can go look at these other guys, these this other family paid. They'll just keep charging. Keep, then they'll just well, keep charging. It, yeah. it becomes they, they even if we raise a stink, I think they would still charge the next family. But it's a, but then there becomes a history of or at least you start you you're breaking the pattern you're yeah. breaking the pattern of saying well, like, this is not okay this is not okay this resistance. is not acceptable resist you know i think in this sort of a, a like time of that we are at um there has been so many huge leaps and so much movement and um and our sort of like fight for equality and so sometimes we forget and it's easy i feel like even i forget sometimes and i'm like no like so much movement, but there's also a lot of attacks on it right now. Well, yes. In the last well, six, eight years, yeah, whatever it's been, like it's there's been fair, but I just feel like it hasn't necessarily like seeped. It's it only had like it comes along every just when I start to feel like I get comfortable and where I start to be like, no, it actually isn't that bad. Something like this happens, and it makes me realize it is more present than I realize. Well, I don't. I, I I just think that these are the little things that are like little chips along the way. That's just like little chip of paint coming off when you say, okay, I'll pay this invoice and not be like, whoa, this is not right. This it's not right. I'm hopeful that if we sort of are able to state our case in a way that's respectful or whatever, that maybe they will come around or maybe they will just say, you know what? You're right. Um, you know, cause we haven't really, <laughs> I don't think they're going to say that. I, I don't know. It could be, I feel like if we just talk, you know, cause before the conversation you had was like, yeah, yeah, of course, like whatever, but there wasn't, you guys well, didn't really get into it, right? Like you didn't really have no. A, but I, the, the person I was speaking to was not in that role. I, like the person who sends out the invoices and the charges, like that's uh, that's not their job. That's what I mean. So, it might, so like just like taking it to the next person to say like, hey, this is the situation. Of course, I like I would hope that you would respect the fact that we. It's not right to expect us to put this, you know organization on our sense back or whatever i don't know i think that we'll be able to, i'm hopeful that i'm hopeful i could be absolutely naive maybe i will be but no i that, think it's fair to be hopeful because so far they have hurt us not uh, not the church but right. the league yes has hurt us and and done what we've asked and tried to make good um this is just something that we wanted to talk about because it, I, again, and I'll, I'll say this again it, as we close, um, that I feel like this is something that a lot of families like ours may have experienced. And, um, and I guess this is our contribution to the conversation and to the continued awareness that things like this still happen. Um, and, Yeah. It's it's hard. It's re it's really hard to like to to say this and 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 share this because again like I think about people who have died, people who have really done the hard work, uh, people who are are beaten, attacked in restrooms and yeah. kids that are murdered for being who they are and then I think of, "Oh, why don't we just pay the jersey?" But isn't it all one circle? Like the mentality of Listen, he's jumping into the restroom. I think that's it, right? I'm, hold on. I'm, 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 Look, it's been almost 50 minutes. I think we're solid. All right. Thank you for listening, guys. We will uh, we'll share more as we know more. Uh, and uh, if you want to check out our website, 25north.com, you can do that. Link is in the description. Our Patreon, patreon.com slash Matt and Blue. That link will be in the description. Otherwise, you can like, please share, please comment. We would love to know your perspective. Uh, please keep it respectful. If there's something we're missing or 
maybe uh, a different angle we can be looking at this or if you have any experience uh, with this type of um, situation, please let us know, okay? Peace to the world. Peace to the world, Matt. Peace to the world. Peace to the world. I got to pee. Oh, boy. We're lucky we did that. That battery was fried. I did. I peed on the toilet seat. I peed on my underwear and my pants. Ugh. Did you pee on the front of the toilet?